appreciate you joining us here in a very rare treat live coming at you. Adam Kaufman, Evan Valenti, and Jared Weiss from The Athletic, good friend of this program. And he's tight on time. So, Jared, we know we don't have you very long. We want to maximize you here. What's really interesting is we ended our show last week talking about, man, everything's great in the Celtics world other than the Danilo Gallinari injury. And what could derail them from being the top seed, the top team, not only in the East, but maybe in the entire NBA? Well, we found out uh, a variety of ways. Uh, Rob Williams obviously is going to be sidelined to start the year, and head coach Ime Odoka may no longer be that. He may not be with the team the entire year, perhaps beyond, after obviously an internal scandal that has been reported by multiple outlets at this point being involved with one, maybe multiple co-workers, depending on which reports you want to believe. What's the very latest you can tell us after obviously a, a whole lot of time on the phone today? Oh, God, yeah. I mean, in a a situation like this, the reporting, I don't have anything to add into what I've been seeing being reported. I know every time I get to this situation, and, and what's tough about this one is there's so many false leads, because this is one of the places, a Twitter detective, and I've been seeing a lot of you know harmful stuff about different women being outed as potential people involved with this, who no, nobody has any idea if they are. There's some people that certainly know to a certain degree and a lot of it is not true and it is damaging and harmful stop one way this can stop is that the team reveals to a degree what's going who was involved with it so that's going to be an issue but i just noticed that actually that the celtics are longer working on their website so i guess because people mm -hmm. kept going and looking for target but so, so either way this is a really ugly situation and it's hurting a lot of people that are in so hopefully there is some degree of resolution that can happen soon and it probably will happen at some point i don't i know that it's been reported that he's going to be suspended for a year in all likelihood but much like in this robert sarver situation we just saw that it's not the end of the there could be more things that play out from there do you believe, and I know there's only so much you can say because, like you said, obviously you're, you know, it's it's double, triple sourcing everything, but my just instinct, you know, based on nothing more than that, based on what's been reported to this point, all the way to facing a year-long suspension and maybe even possible parting of the ways, which, by the way, is where I believe this is headed. I, I don't believe Ime Odoka is ever going to coach the Boston Celtics again. I'm curious if you also believe that, and on top of that is – do you believe there's more to this story than has been reported more of substance to this story that that is making all of this make sense because a reported consensual relationship internally and and you know removing the right and wrong of of you know marital affairs and that type of thing obviously but just a, a consensual relationship consensual is a very key word here that wouldn't historically you would think warrant a year-long suspension or possible termination i think that the goal is not as cut and dry as it sounds and it's and the problem is when you when you say that that it makes it which is not necessarily the case I mean, it's too early to know in the situation but because it's over a lot more dynamics involved than just being a willing participant and so i think that we've situations that, that that are similar to this in other organizations in the NBA that, that the way it gets initially reported generally is an open it's not not deliberate but an open full context of the situation and the more that it gets reported the more that actually gets discussed openly that a significant punishment or a lack of punishment can crystallize into reading why it came to be that way and so I think that I don't know if like, for a, a just a you know a, a non-disclosed workplace environment, uh, we're one of the most powerful people in the organization. I don't know if that is even what's appropriate here, but it definitely seems and in the context of, of Ime's situation, where, where he has two years left on his contract from everyone him for one of those years, then having him enter the final year of his tenure as a lame duck a very a situation you don't really see often in the nba and so he's clearly a great good enough coach that you want him around long term so they could extend his deal but extending him while you're doesn't seem to make sense i've never heard of that 
one before. So, so I I don't know how this plays suspended for a year and then comes back. That that one's hard, hard to reconcile. It's certainly possible, but it's hard to reconcile. Jared, do you have any idea? Because again, we're sitting here, we're all kind of waiting and and you know, refreshing Twitter, hitting F5 as much as humanly possible, waiting for somebody to come out with something. Do we have do you have any idea when the Celtics, you know, the the brain trust there between Wick and and Brad and and Steve and everybody else, we have any idea when a statement might get made here? Because again, the longer we sit here and wait without any statement from Boston, the the more speculation goes around, you know, goes rampant and, and the longer we sit here and try and come up with something. Uh, I mean, we've heard today from a few different places. I don't know at this point. Catch-22, where they want to take their time to make sure that they get get this 100% right before taking significant out of reason why they shouldn't, why they you know, shouldn't be uh, dragging their feet on this. And I, I think I go to media, uh, the, the, reckless, uh, the reckless independent journalism happening on social media, put an organization and just rampant speculating that it's them. And so um it's it essentially slut shaming which is wrong to do so it's i don't talking about this would even put an end to that, that. uh but it, it, it would i guess it would at least from the situation at least tampers down the rampant speculation and it gives people something to focus on what they do i would imagine they're gonna say something at some point today maybe a draft until tomorrow, but getting past the end of this week, we, we got we got media day on Monday. Like every right, buddy is stepping in front of the, the Mayodoka, presumably Joe Mazzula as the coach at that point. Uh, but like they they need to have a lot of people as a PR team and 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 give all the players answers to how to deal with the questions that they're is that like media day is going to be completely overshadowed by this. I mean, there's only so many questions we can ask, but like it's it's not going to be at all what we thought it was already it was already going to be tough when you deal with the gallo injury and rob being hurt and, and you guys lost last year can you recreate this? this is way beyond that at this point yeah i mean this isn't going to be anything like your typical you know i'm in the best shape of my life media day like you said there were already things that were negative or, or at least mildly concerning going into the season but nothing that was going to be earth shattering or was going to dampen any sort of positivity around the season now, though, obviously, with this story, you know, I, I've heard just, you know, privately and, and to some degree publicly, obviously, some mixed opinions on Joe Missoula. I realize he was, you know, a candidate for the head coaching job in, in Utah, which obviously went to Will Hardy. And I think the Celtics, you know, if, if timing weren't what it is, you'd, you'd love to have Will Hardy on the bench right now because he would obviously assume this role even ahead of Joe Missoula. But now we have to see, you know, another first year head coach, how the, the players are going to get behind him. And this is not someone that obviously they campaigned for in the way that they did someone like an Ime Odoka, who obviously had their trust, had previous relationships with many of them, had, you know, so much support. This is now going in, you know, very blind in many ways. And we don't know how that's going to go over internally, how they're going to handle it, how Missoula's personality is going to mesh with these players in a leadership role. And, you know, this cloud, like you mentioned, I just sort of feel like the Celtics, Brad Stevens' ownership as well. They need to get in front of this, not just in the form of a release. They need to meet with the media, meet with people like yourself, talk about this a little bit ahead of Monday. I don't think everyone should be answering this question for the first time Monday. If nothing else, Jared, give the players a couple of days to hear what the front office and ownership is saying before they formulate their own responses. I agree with you. I mean, I'll always buy for more. more uh, for, I think it would be best for them to address at the very least at the beginning of media day, but honestly, they should be addressing it just beforehand. Uh, um, because if you don't take the open questions beforehand, then we're going to ask them on media, not media day to be positive, then, or at least a little bit more positive. I agree with you. Uh, and then I kind of touched on, I have to go after this, is sure. how, how does this impact that was kind of in disarray to a degree a year ago, and then the last couple months, they get they went through a lot this off season. Like it was already tapped. I'm pretty sure losing the NBA Finals is worse than losing the second round, honestly. Um, as, as far as like how frustrated and and Jalen Brown was spent months in trade rumors, 
Sean mm-hmm. White were offered for KD. It, it's one thing to be in trade talks. He reported that it was, it was a trade offer. And Jalen knows he was uh, he was up for grabs for a great player. Derek White knows that. Marcus Rumors, like, this, this was, once again, another destabilized offseason. And, you know, these under Ainge, they all, all felt like they were trade chips. And I, I think Stevens did a nice job of building up the organization throughout the offseason, off you know, trading away a bunch of fringe players who weren't really in all due respect to Daniel Tice to get Malcolm Brogdon. Um, I think the guys, like, like the, there's seven core guys on, on this organization, basically, that are, like, clearly vital parts of the organization. And thought, like, the Celtics really believe in us. And then the KD thing happened. These guys are trade chips still, and, like, it's not complete. Like, Jason's basically the only guy on the team that's untouchable. Do that, and then now you're take, taking away Ime. And Ime was so, so crucial to giving these guys, I think, ownership in the organization and in their program that they have there. And you take that away, Joe. And, and Joe is, I think he's going to be a really good coach. Everybody seems to agree on that. Not to the front of the bench in the NBA. He hasn't had the time to establish his bona fides yet. He isn't be, being hired in the way that Ime was, in the way that Brad was, where it was, it was like a holiday. And they had a whole PR spin on what makes these guys great and all that kind of stuff. They don't quite get this, So he doesn't, he doesn't get that little boost that he comes in with the whole you know, red carpet rollout. He's re- but the good news is he's been there for a while. He knows these guys really well. He's certainly proven himself, I think, these guys there. They all know he's good. So, you know, I think if Joe's the coach, which seems like it's going to be half capable of doing the job well, uh, he's just work- working really steeply uphill right now. All right, Jared. Well, I know you got to run. We'll let you go and uh, appreciate you taking some time with us and, and hashing some of this stuff out. Obviously, there's uh, much still to be determined, to be reported, written about. And uh, we know that you will have a story as well in uh, in due time, hopefully today. So make sure you check Jared out on uh, Twitter. Follow all of his work on The Athletic. We'll catch you again soon. And uh, through no fault of your own, I realize we'll get you on with better audio next time. Thanks, Jared. Appreciate it, buddy. Yeah, for Our just for, for the other people in the comment section, yeah, we do see you. It's just an unfortunate part of of live uh, podcasting, Adam. You know, yeah. when it's live, yeah. you just kind of have to roll with it. You know, we uh, if yeah, you just if, you know, if normally we if we were doing our typical pre recorded show, oh, you yeah. know, we would have said like, Jared, this isn't working. Stop. We're gonna wait. We're gonna clear up this audio, and then we're gonna start oh, yeah. again once you're clear. But obviously. You know, Jared's been busy on the phone all day. We greatly appreciate him, you know, having any time to set aside for us and talk about some of this stuff. Uh, not, you know, the usual, whatever, 45 minutes or an hour that uh, that he would typically give us. But today's a very unique day. So the fact that he could even give us 10 or 15, uh, very much appreciated. And, uh, you know, make sure you check out his work a little bit later on. Get that athletic subscription if you don't have it. But I, I think we, you know, people could sort of... Uh, you know, comb through the garbled audio a little bit there, Evan. I see, like you said, the people in the chat. If anyone, while we are here and, and you know, taking advantage of this live format, if anybody does have any questions you want to shout out on YouTube, on Twitter, wherever, yeah, uh, we we'll got do our best to answer them. But it's, I mean, this is, it's just, it's, rem- I can't remember a Celtics offseason like this one ever, obviously. But in even ignoring, like, the sloppy reporting and and lack of details involved in this situation just the the chaos of the last few weeks leading immediately into a season like we talked about it media day is monday man tuesday is the beginning of training camp preseason games are weeks away the regular season is you know less than a month away and we're sitting here talking about the Celtics having a brand new head coach they were just two wins away from a championship last year yeah, and this is where, like, and I didn't want to make this point until later, but I'll, I guess I'll just do it now because the way you set it up. This is why I think making Joe Mazzulli the interim head coach is going to be a disaster. I think I think it's set up for for just a a, a season of frustration. You know what I mean? Um, we're already starting it. The season hasn't started yet. You had the Gallo injury, Rob, which I wasn't concerned. I mean, I wasn't totally surprised by it. Let me put it that way. Mm-hmm. Um, to have those two things happen that are already going to kind of set you back and we've spent so much time trying to figure out what to do with the last roster spot. That's so far in the rear view mirror now. 
Now we have to figure out who's going to lead this team. And this is yep. when having a veteran leader, which we've been talking about ad nauseum for this team, like who's the real leader of the Boston Celtics, that would be very helpful right now if you had a legitimate, clear front running leader in the, in the locker room. I know Boston tries to, you know, we'll do it together collectively. Like Marcus is this, and then, you know, Al is here. And then it, not having one right now is going to be difficult. So, and then to put that all in Joe Missoula, Adam, I think it's kind of unfair. Yeah. For, well, completely. And, and I'm a little bit, and I saw somebody else make this point. I don't remember who it was. So I apologize. You know, there's seen a lot on Twitter, obviously, in the last at, at this point, what 15 hours when all this stuff started to break. Questioning why it's Missoula as opposed to Damon Stoudemire in the first place. Like, at, at least, yes, Missoula's been around longer, for sure. Knows some of these guys better. But as far as I believe, Stoudemire was, you know, higher on the totem pole, being, you know, a not the right-hand man, that was Will Hardy, but a right-hand man, if you will, to Ime Odoka, those two having a previous relationship going back to their Portland days. And the fact that Stoudemire... Never mind the fact that he's he's you know played in the NBA for years and years and has experienced you know just about everything you know from all star level success all the way down to you know being a journeyman and fighting for minutes off the bench and that type of thing over a long career he's been a coach like he coached in college he had some success you know I'm 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 a little surprised that they didn't go in that direction but that being said you know for the people that you know are watching and you keep seeing me like occasionally kind of look away from the camera it's because I'm checking my phone. Uh, religiously waiting to see some sort of a release or something. Uh, I'm checking Twitter constantly. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, just refreshing Woj and Shams and Himmelsbach and and everybody. Uh, I, I just, it's it's unbelievable to me that there hasn't been some sort of a statement so far, some sort of something from the team. Remember, everything that has come out to this point, everything that has come out has been, you know, courtesy of, national reports or you know confirmations from Himmelsbach after you know obviously Shams and, and Woj there has not yet been anything at all from the team and so uh, you know I, I I understand as Jared talked about why they obviously want to make sure they get this right and this is going to be a, a very carefully worded press release and quotes and so on when it comes out and hopefully with an accompanying press conference you know, probably not today at this point, maybe tomorrow, but I just don't, I feel like we're, I know I'm rambling, but I feel like we're at the point of no return here, Ev. You know, yeah, I, no. I think at a certain point, the Celtics could have, if they got in front of this, and, and I don't know when exactly, but much sooner than now, if they got in front of this, had maybe avoided the leak in the first place, wherever it came from, be it the team or, you know, use your imagination. If they had gotten ahead of this enough, they could have had some sort of a mea culpa and he may could have, you know, served his time, so to speak, had his penance, you know, had a suspension and then come back. And I, I think they could have, they could have sold it. They could have sold it to people. Do you think this but caught the seas off guard? I, I think the leak. Well, I don't know. I, I don't know. Where I, don't, the, I, where I don't buy that at it, all. It's, it's I, I got to. I got to. The news didn't catch did them off text, What did you text me last night? Because I was already asleep. Uh, who can remember what I texted? I've sent a lot of texts at this point. What's right? that? You texted me like 11 o'clock last night, right? Like, Evan, wake up. Like, stuff's happening? Yeah. Okay. So, from 11 o'clock I don't believe last the Celtics night, were caught off guard, just for the record. The Celtics were not caught off guard by this. Okay. They've known about this for days. That's been reported. Right. So but my, my point is... I don't is, think they were prepared for it at the same time. How, how do you not be prepared? For, like, okay, you texted me at 11 o'clock last night, like, hey, something's going on. Again, I, I was already asleep, so I apologize. Sure. For that. But between, at the very latest, 11 o'clock last night, and we are now at 3.30 Eastern time, 3.24, right. if you want to be exact. Yeah. 10.30 is when we look at his very first tweet. All you've been working on is this. You need a response to this. Now, I understand if you're trying to dig and you're trying to figure out exactly all the pieces of information, but there has to be – you've had over 12 hours, almost tw – you know, we're going to get, I guess, you know, 24 hours in a little bit here, a full day of, of an idea of, like, what are we generating in the first day? To not have something by now, again, is, is reckless to me. And you're letting wow. all this other stuff and it's and it's all these other outlets that are – that are trying really hard to to uncover this whole thing, let them go crazy and run and run rampant. Or like you're getting uh, names thrown in there unfairly and unjustly. Like this is just mm -hmm. kind of really, really bad. 
and it's going to all reflect very poorly on the Celtics organization. The fact they don't have anything right now is 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 kind of inexcusable. Like they, the Celtics are a multi-billion-dollar you know corporation here. They are they have all these tools at their disposal. There's no excuse for them not to have anything done at this point. Um, and again, with media day coming up, like as yeah. Jared pointed out and you've pointed out, like this is going to come to a very big head very 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 quickly here. So if you want to be like, hey. Um, you know, we'll we'll talk more about this on media because, like, yes, this, this is going to be a conversation on media day, folks. To, mm-hmm. Like, let's just get something really quickly straight here. This is going to be a conversation. It's going to be a conversation with every single person in the locker room, and I don't care what Jeff Twist or anybody else tries to say about you know you can't ask these questions. They're going to happen. Um, and 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 Boston needs to find a way to get out in front of this. They probably and again, I'm not saying I, I can't. We have to be careful here of the way we word things. They, I would guess they knew about this prior to any tweets last night. Um, and oh, they I, definitely I did. I, it's no listen, Brad Stevens was at the garden last night for the ABCD Hoop Dreams tournament. He spoke with reporters. You know, Gary Washburn had an article talking about the, the immediate injury futures, you know, of, of Rob Williams and Danilo Gallinari because both were, I believe, scheduled to go under the knife at some point today. And you know, what's their timeline and all of that? Obviously, it's it was not an accident that this report came out long after Brad had media availability. That's not a coincidence. It just can't be. The team has been aware that, that this was coming. I'm not saying it, it was released in the way they would have chosen to release it. I, I certainly don't believe that because I think they would have liked to have done it themselves. And I, I think it's also, I tweeted this. I think it's noteworthy, Evan. We've talked about this before. The fact that like Brad Stevens, I don't believe for a second it came from Brad. And I will tell you why. When Brad wants to keep something quiet, his hiring as head coach, Mm -hmm. various extensions, promotion to president of basketball operations, you know, telegraphing moves that he has chosen to telegraph versus the ones that he's given you no indication of. Brad Stevens is as close to the vest as they come. He is not someone who is at all reckless. So if, if, and I'm saying if, If the leak came from within the Celtics organization, it didn't come anywhere near Brad. I don't believe that. I really don't. Because I think he does a masterful job of keeping things internal. And And why would Brad do something like that? Someone wanted this to get out. There has to be be motivation for Brad to to leak that out. And that there's no motivation for Brad Stevens to leak anything like that out. Unless there was something. But if there was some ginormous blow up between Brad and Emei, which there hasn't been, we would have known about it. Like, there... From what it, from what we can gather, that then the first year of the relationship between Brad and Ime, like it went really great. I mean, it, you know, Brad has all this um, appreciation and respect for Ime and what he's done both in his basketball career as a player and as a, an assistant coach for so many different mm-hmm. teams. Like a big reason why Brad wanted Ime to coach this team was because of his experience with the Spurs and with the Nets and with the Sixers, and then of course as a player, like. There, that relationship to me again. If it's if it's if it's bad again, everybody did a great job of keeping that under wraps. Again, this is this is a really unique story here, and it's just you know where did it come from? How did this get out? What are they doing? Like this is it, it's 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 getting kind of ugly. And this is again comes back to this needs to be addressed like sooner and later here. And as I I, I I scan Twitter as quickly as I possibly yeah. can, again I don't see anything, but you know this reminds me of a, a little bit in terms of a, a karma situation not a karma but just like what are, we, what are you ennis Cantor now no oh, don't please don't please do not oh, my start God. invoking enis, karma enis, here enis Did needs to hear tweet earlier my he God. needs to take it he, uh, needs to, look i have a phrase and i want everybody to just to notice this you don't have to tweet like you just don't <laughs> have to do it and enis like you just don't have to tweet bud like take a back seat for a second yeah. um but like you had years ago the Kyrie Gordon Hayward. They had the nice press conference, looked at each other, like whatever. Um, and it was this huge thing. And then in five minutes into the regular season, bang, gone. There goes everything. Yeah. Now here we are before the season even starts, before even media day starts, and it's like, oh my goodness, like couldn't even get to media day before all this blew up in everybody's face. And and, and it's just unfortunate timing and an unfortunate like because we all got super excited after the nba finals run and we're like oh gallo signing brown like oh man like you're getting revved up for a season like 
the the, the Celtics were the title favorites on certain books. Still are, still yeah, are, right? So it was it was all looking Celtics, all coming up Celtics, all this great stuff, all this great energy, and all of a sudden, bang, shh, bye. All that energy is gone, and now we're sitting here, Adam. Who the heck is going to lead the Celtics in 22-23? And as I said before, maybe we can get into this a little bit. Like mm. uh, we we talked about maybe being uh, you know Mighty Mouse on the bench. Like somebody, I I I I feel very uncomfortable handing this team over to Joe Missoula. And I'm not trying to say Joe is a bad coach. I'm not sure. saying that. He, he just this may not. Good. I mean, Jared alluded to this. He just may not be ready yet. No, and that's you why know? you hear names like Frank Vogel, Mannix threw that out earlier. Like, is that? Yeah. Is, a guy with championship experience who is, is known as a defensive head coach. Like that's not a bad idea. Not a bad idea at all, in my opinion, considering, you know, what he's done as a head coach throughout his entire time. Like, well, I know keep he in mind though, Man- Manic said that, you know, he, he would be a candidate to join the staff, not to be the interim head coach, you know, well, so I think be, Missoula would know, need somebody a veteran like that. voice behind Missoula, which I would yeah. support a thousand percent. Anybody that's had prior coaching experience, like, and I'm not saying Damon Stoudemire is not a good replacement either, but like going from Pacific to NBA head coach, Adam, I think is sure. a little bit different. You know, Very I think different. it's a little bit of a jump there. And it Very is different. unfortunate Will Hardy's gone because he would have been perfect for this particular assignment. Um, and it's just, again, bad timing. But there's got to be – I just – and again, I like Joe. He's been around the players for a long time, so they're comfortable with him. But I, there has to be someone else that you can bring in. For, okay, Because, again, like you, right – like you, I do not think that Ime is coming back to the Celtics. I think they are done here. So yeah, I mean, I, I think that's how we should operate going forward, at least in the in the context of this show. And maybe later on today, we'll get some news at, at some point. Maybe it, it winds up breaking before we do get out of here. We appreciate everyone being with us. If you do have questions, we see you guys in the chat largely talking with each other. But if you have specific questions, we're happy to uh, you know attempt to address those. I just I don't see it. I don't see them massaging this situation. I, I I don't see them, you know, him being out for a year and then coming back and sort of regaining control of the locker room in the same way and and being able to preach the same things about personal accountability and character and morale and you know all all of the things that you know were, were like trademarks in listening to Ime. Like we would joke throughout the season calling Ime captain accountability. If there's someone who has not been you know, accountable for his personal behavior. It's obviously Ime Odoka in this specific situation that has led him to where he is now. So, you, I mean, you're going to lose some respect, obviously, from members of that locker room. I would think if he hasn't already, I realize, you know, based on the reports, players are already in the know. It's just they're, I don't know, they're sort of to to talk out of both sides of my mouth for a, for a hot second here, Ev. There's a part of me that looks at it and says, Man, like what a missed opportunity against the Warriors. Like you were so close, so close. You don't blow that one game. Maybe you win from there and you don't go on the losing streak and and you win the championship and you get that ring. And I'm not saying none of this happens. I'm just saying at least you have Banner 18 in the rear view. Like that, that has happened. You have that. You're, you know, you've you've got that in your pocket. The banner's getting ready to be hoisted on opening night. There's another part of me though. That doesn't look at, like the storyline, the PR of it is an abject disaster for sure. But if I'm just looking at purely what happens on the floor this coming year, be it under Missoula or whether it was under Ime or whether it was under, you know, Will Hardy or Damon Stoudemire or Frank Vogel or you name it. I just think coaching only matters so much in the NBA. Makes a difference. Ime is a good head coach. He proved that last year. But I also believe that, you know, Brad Stevens was a, a, a solid head coach. And, you know, they never got as far as as they did under Ime last year. So ultimately, what matters way more than coaching, like coaching might get you another five wins, right? Or maybe it does help you in the playoffs in, in certain instances. But ultimately, talent, talent prevails. And if they, we talked about this with Gary last week, if they are healthy, which of course they're not entering the season healthy with the Rob Williams injury, but if come playoff time, they are mostly healthy. Their key guys, their key rotational players are mostly healthy because this is still a playoff team. Like you don't lose Ime and all of a sudden you're not going to the playoffs. If they go to the postseason, mostly healthy. I still am a believer in them. I still don't like, I don't think this is the kind of thing that is going to derail their season as ugly as it looks right now, you know, on the cusp of media day. Yeah. And, and it's, it's like one of these things where, as we saw in the NBA finals and we saw throughout 
you know, the NBA playoffs, like these little tiny minuscule advantages that you, that you have, they're all important. They all add up. And I believe that Ime was a very, very, very good head coach. Mm -hmm. Um, I, and his staff did a wonderful job. Um, not having him is going to be a blow. And I, and because it's just, it's, it's, it's the, having smart people around, especially when you have, uh, young talent like Tatum and Brown who are still growing, like having those guys in their ears, that's that's really important. And having a guy that can see it like Ime and Will Hardy did last year. And again, everybody on the staff, it's all collective, but it's it's like this. I think this is kind of in terms of the development of, of Tatum and Brown, like this is kind of a big deal. And I and I and mm -hmm. like those guys can do their own stuff off the court and they all have their own trainers and all this stuff. But having a, a what do we talk about all the time when it comes to quarterbacks, Adam? We talk about how consistency is really key. You know, look at the Patriots going from, you know, Mac Jones having Josh McDaniels to Mac Jones now having Matt Patricia and Joe Judge. Like, there's no consistency there. Um, having the same voice over and over and over again is very important to development. And, and, and I'm not saying Tatum and Brown can't develop on their own time and develop, and like, but it's going to be something that might hurt them. And this is, this is my, my issue with this whole thing. Is like we were so we were in such a good spot, um, you know. The trajectory was going up. I mean, we all saw the the leap of Jason Tatum in the NBA Finals, the NBA playoffs as a playmaker. Like that was exactly what it's what what's supposed to be like. And now we might have hit a snag. And now this whole thing changes. And it's it's just unfortunate. And I and and again, you know, these guys are pretty. You know, the, the, they're NBA players, are professionals, so they're going to obviously mm -hmm. go to work and do stuff. But like again. This is why we say development isn't linear. Like, just things happen. Um, and and now you're going to start the season with so many questions. And none of this is going to sure. go away until we watch people play games. That's the reality of it. You're going to have questions from now until opening day. And if that first game, let's, say, let's just say that first game against Philly is a blowout, it's going to be brutal. It could be a long season. Again, I don't know. I'm not trying to project anything. But it's not a great start. It's not what you want, Adam. It's not what you want. So King Coppa in the chat. And again, we see you guys in the chat. If you have thoughts, I'm not, not uh, you know, hesitant to read them, especially ones that will come right at me. King Coppa says, shut up, Adam. Players play for coaches and every player wanted Eme here and other players wanted to come coach or, or come play for Eme. So I think there's a lot of truth to that. I absolutely think there is. Like take, for example, obviously, you know, how much Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, Marcus Smart, you know, guys that had a previous existing Team USA or, or, you know, international relationship with Emei from, you know, his time there, their excitement, their, who knows, backdoor recruiting even, uh, you know, to the front office of trying to get Emei Odoka here. They wanted to play for him. They were passionate about playing for him. They, they responded well to him. And there's no reason, excuse me, no reason to believe that, you know, prior to all this, that wasn't going to continue. It's why everyone's expectations were so high for this coming season. If I'm projecting it ahead a little bit, I suppose, where, you know, King Coppa may have a point here is Tatum's under contract for a little while, obviously. But it, what was the the big thing we talked about throughout the offseason with respect to Kevin Durant? Well, how sure are you guys that that Jalen Brown wants to be here in two years when he's a free agent? Well, what if Jalen Brown doesn't like the direction they take they take coaching wise? You know, like you knew Emei was going to be here. Well, now you don't know that. And I'm and you are presuming that he's not. So what if Jalen Brown doesn't like playing for Joe Missoula or, or, you know, Missoula does work out or doesn't work out. And they, you know, regardless, they have somebody else a year from now, they have their third, you know, fourth head coach in as many years. If you go back to Brad, that's what it would be, which is insane. When you think about an organization like the Boston Celtics and the tenure of Brad and doc rivers before him. But if, if Jalen or someone like that, all of a sudden doesn't believe in the head coach. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's going to, speed up the process of potentially leaving so it's a concern like there are a lot of concerns that that come out of this this whole process unfortunately all because you know based on what's been reported out there he may couldn't control himself you know no. e even in a consensual way couldn't right. control himself you know that you don't there, there are a reason that rules like this are in place at any company, not, not just talking about the Boston Celtics, that, but there's a reason why it's part of their code of conduct. It is, you know, I, I realize like inter-office relationships 
are a thing. They happen everywhere. You know, if you haven't been in one yourself, you know someone who has. Like, it's it's very common. I'm not dismissing that. Plenty of people get married, you know, out of those relationships. Great. Like, good for you. But there's just no way that Ime was involved with someone who was an equal to him in terms of status within the organization. And right. I say that because he's a head coach. You know, like very few people are at that level. So, you know, then you you're and this is we don't want to speculate, obviously, but just like connecting the dots, then you're dealing with a potential subordinate or, right. you know, it, like any number of of areas that make this whole thing so incredibly messy. Ev. Yeah. And I'm looking at again, this is and I'm, and I'm not trying to say that these guys are going to break, you know, some C's news. I'm just throwing it out there because it's out there. Uh, mm. Merloni uh, on his show today. And they just tweeted this 18 minutes ago. Quote, one of the reasons why maybe they're so quiet, and I've talked to someone today that I think is tied in over there, is that pretty much they're negotiating a separation. Um, and, and I believe it. That's and how that's I feel. Where we're at here. I guess the question that I have, um, and I've seen it a bunch in the chat here, is you know, does Brad Stevens walk down from the pobo chair and 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 bail him out for a, for a season? Is that what no you want? Chance. I don't think it's possible. I don't think you can no put chance. the – you, you can't like it's putting the toothpaste back in the tube. I don't think you can do yeah. that with, with Brad. I know. And look, Brad's a great head coach. Um, I don't think he, you know, he's also I, done I great. Don't, I, don't he wants to coach. I don't think he wants to coach. I think he's done with coaching. Um, I think, I think he likes what he's doing. I think he has a better relationship with his family right now. I think that matters a lot to him. Um, mm -hmm. But like, I, I again, and especially and shout out to any Halleck's over here who put points this out really quickly. He is a great GM. Why would you want him doing something else? Right. He's an excellent GM. So to your credit, like, yeah, he's absolutely great. It's just, and if, and what's, what's interesting here is if you are a head coach, like just circling out there in the stratosphere and I, I'm sure Kaufman could not, Seth, get out of here. Kaufman could not coach. <laughs> that's but that, but, but, but that, that's, and like, no, I don't believe I could, but that speaks to, you know, some people have a, 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 a real varying degree of belief on how much coaching matters in, in professional sports, but certainly in the NBA. Yeah. I, and I think in the NBA with this particular team, coaching does matter. Um, it's not like you have like LeBron or Kevin Durant where, where you could just say like, yeah, the, the at the end of the day, like give that guy the ball, he's going to just go. You don't have one of those guys yet. Like, and Tatum is, I don't think, quite there yet. Um, you know, I, you're going to have to find someone, um, you know, who's a good X's and O's guy and can connect with players like Ime did. Like, that was kind of the beauty of, of Ime is, is you had a guy that understood how to talk to players and get them motivated. And, you know, you can question the tactics at the beginning of the season. I sure as hell did. Uh, <laughs> clearly, sure. that, Knicks, that Knicks press conference, which was an absolute debacle, yeah. um, did not did not like that at all. But he got through to guys. And, you know, from Nexus and O's point, like, that team was still really good on both sides of the ball. Um, you to find that guy now this late in the process is like impossible. Um, man, it's just, it's, it's it, all, it's just super unfortunate and it's just bad timing. And it's yeah, just, I mean, it, it was an exhaustive search to find Ime Odoka, you know, in general and, and not exhaustive in that, like you, you were looking overseas or whatever, but like you interviewed a lot of different candidates, you know, guys who have become head coaches since obviously in the NBA and decided on Ime, you know, he sold you, you sold him it, and it worked. Like it, you know, it was a bumpy start maybe in terms of getting everyone to buy in properly and implementing his system and everything like that. But you know, that final third of the season, let's call it on into the postseason, It worked, man. It was great. Again, reason for enthusiasm this coming year. Now you're choosing just days away from training camp, a few days away. Now you're choosing from like two guys who are on your bench already. It's that's that's not what you're looking for. And there's no I, I don't believe and I I just don't believe that Brad's coming down from the front office. One, like you said, I don't think he wants to. And two, he's done his job really, really well. And I, I don't think he's ready to, you know, walk away from that even for a season to, you know, hop back into this role and blur those lines and then go back to that after coaching these guys. Then you're negotiating contracts again. You're like ping ponging, you know, be, between the, the bench and and the pobo chair like it's that's no it's just it's not going to happen so you're you're going to hope for the best with missoula at this point i don't believe he is coming back i've said that a thousand times maybe we'll find out when the celtics do make an announcement that he is you know a year from now or he's positioned to a year from now but 
in the short term, Ev, you're going to see what happens with with Missoula. I just I can only imagine when when Gary and whoever else were talking to him at, at the garden yesterday, what was going through his head when he's being asked about. So like back end of the bench and replacing Rob, you know, what you going to add another big? What do you what are you going to do with that extra roster spot going into training camp? Brad's thinking I got way bigger fish to fry than that nonsense right now. I need a new head coach in a couple of days. Yeah. Uh, somebody threw out to Becky Hammond, uh, who just won a title with the Aces. I was going to say WNBA her, champion Becky Hammond. Her first year there. Uh, well done. Uh, I mean, she's look, she's as qualified as anybody. I don't think she's going anywhere. Um, you know, you could you could talk about and again when, um, you know, when the the coaching position became available, Carol Lawson's name was mm -hmm. was in there, and it wasn't. I mean, I remember Scal being like, "Don't." That's that's that yeah, is for real. Like she is a, she's a brilliant, brilliant mind. Um, she knows these Celtics guys. She's played before. Um, you know, I'm not I'm not just, you know, going to throw it out there because, uh, you know, she's a former Celtics assistant. She's just a really good coach. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's I, I again, it's an ideal scenario for any head coach out there with any experience to want. Like this is this roster set up for like just. <laughs> they just win the M. How many times has this happened, Adam? When an NBA Finals team loses their head coach, like what is this? Like this is, yeah. Uh, I mean, not unprecedented, obviously, but but doesn't you know? I, I'm I'm not sure, not sure it's ever happened quite like I this. Think, I don't think so. Not this yeah. close to like everything starting with with media day being Monday. Yeah, I don't know. I, I I don't know. I just I just don't know. And and it, what stinks is like I and I love all the questions, love the interactions, guys. Like it's this is really truly amazing. I wish we did more live stuff because this is a lot of fun for me. Maybe um, we will. And yeah, maybe that's something that we. But like this particular type of show is really hard to really do because of we're all sitting here in limbo. Like you know, me and Adam are basically you guys in the comment section uh, section. Um, you know, we're all guessing here, but it's all conjecture. We have no idea. No, I do not want Mark Jackson. Please, no. Absolutely not. I'm all set. I'm good on that. We saw yeah. what that is. I is there some brilliant mind on a bench somewhere like Sam Cassell? Maybe. I, I look. I, I don't think it matters. I don't, I don't think really? that matters at this point. I well, what I mean when I say it doesn't matter, I mean like it's going to be Missoula. Like they've they've basically already said that. The reports I think, that you I think it's a, I think it's such a bad idea. I think it's a terrible idea. I think it's. I'm just going to go out. That would be a terrible idea. I'm going to stick because again, I was. I was adamant about email and I feel sort of bad about that now. You equally um, adamant on the other side about uh I mean I, I think Sam Cassell would be a good idea. I'm just gonna throw it out there. Um, yeah, it's not gonna it's not gonna happen though. They're not gonna bring in a guy to coach the team, you know, starting in training camp. It but, just I guess, like, yeah, because of uh, you know, at least this Joe isn't Cole like you know, like team. Paul Westhead taking over the Lakers, you know, right after Jack McCormick fell off his bike like that you yeah. know that's that's this is different mm -hmm. they've yeah. got guys in house and you know they believe it like obviously brad stevens and going back to danny ainge like big believers in joe missoula what what you think what i think or what people in the chat think like that doesn't matter you know what matters is what the front office thinks what the players think and you know right. hopefully they're sold on missoula we'll find out i just what i keep coming back to and i'm not going to speculate i'm not going to speculate because it wouldn't be fair it'd be irresponsible we what I keep coming back to is that I just believe there is, and part of the delay is that there's more to this story that we don't know yet. It's all, it's, it's too, I don't know. There are just too many questions. There are too many questions for, for people to then turn people like ourselves to then turn and say, yeah, that makes sense. Your long suspension for that. It's, it's more complicated. I just believe it's Ask more complicated than what we've Ask heard so far. Considering again, considering that uh, the option is he's not coming back, and like that's the option. Yeah, and it's got to be there's And, and, this and by the way, he'll get he'll get scooped up, you know, in in a, in a relative instant. And what I mean by that is like the next coaching cycle. Obviously, he won't do anything this year, but the next coaching cycle, he'll have a job. Oh, no question. In a minute, he won't be on play long. It won't take no. long. But like, ah, I don't know. This is just not what you want, Adam. Not what no. you want. And and again, uh, a good question in the comment section: Is this like a league wide thing, or is this a Celtics thing? Um, 
No idea. We don't okay. know. And, and but you know, to, to bring it back to you know full circle, so, there, the mean, it why, doesn't matter. It it, yeah. does, it like the wasn't one of the reports that you know this was along the way, like long before this became public. Because again, the team has known. It was communicated to Ime Odoka, like, "Hey, stop it! Like, you know, c- clean up your mess, so to speak." Mm-hmm. And he didn't. So there was there was there was a decision involved here that he had to at least know in theory. Again, based on the reporting, if you want to believe it, he had to know what direction this could be going. Right. Fascinating choice to make. Yeah. But to bring it full circle, the reason why we had Jared Weiss on in the beginning is to try and get a little bit more information out of somebody. Like, you know, right. Adam and I just sitting here with you guys in the comment section, like, that's a great show. But we want to try maybe advance the story a little bit. And that's why we try to have Jared on for as much as we could to try and maybe help us break down what is happening, what could be happening next. And unfortunately, you know, he's in the middle of, you know, checking the sources and it's not just going to be one phone call guys. You got to make a lot of phone calls to corroborate this entire thing. Oh yeah. Um, so again, we, we bring it, we bring on a guy. This is why something speaks unique. You know, we bring on guys to try and, you know, get uh, inside scoops on things. You know, it's not just me and Adam firing off takes, although sometimes it is. Um, but yeah, I, I, I just feel, I guess my biggest thing is I just feel like this team, you guys can't, it, it, it just this Joe Missoula thing is going to be a disaster. And so if that, if, it, if it's going to be Joe, I'm, I'm not looking, um, I'm not looking forward to it. That's all I'm going to say. So David Brown in the chat, Adam, you guys are letting Brad off the hook. Brad's responsible for this mess. Uh, who hired Udoka? I just don't see how any rational person can connect those dots. I agree. Right. Yes. Brad Stevens hired Ime Udoka. Did he tell him to go and, you know, I, I don't Can you call it an affair? I don't know. Because there are reports that, that, you know, he and Nia Long were separated. So I have no idea. I mean, I, I have no idea who the, you know, female in question is and whether she is or was, or, you know, what her relationship status is. My, my point being is that Brad Stevens hired Ime Odoka to be the head coach of the Boston Celtics, which to this point, he's been a successful one. Took him to the NBA finals to win shy of a championship in year one. He doesn't control what he does with his personal decisions in his personal life, which the gray area there is that he took his personal life inside the building, which is, again, obviously a a, a no-no for a yeah. range of reasons. I'm going to disagree with Justin and Kay. I can't pronounce the last name, buddy. I'm sorry. It's a, it's a felt look. Uh, Kobusinski, I'm going to go with that. Something like that. Um, yeah, I, don't think this is, I don't think this is a setup at all. I don't, again, I don't think they're looking to – to, to hand the, the keys to Joe Masula after your first year head coach gets you to the finals. <laughs> like, I don't think that's really what this is about. Uh, I, I think, uh, I, I think that's what they were trying to do here. I, I um, well, I, and think- I, I, me- I mentioned on Twitter, Ev, I'm sorry to cut you off. I mentioned that, yeah. like, is there anything we talk about it all the time? Is there anything more important to Celtics ownership in a business sense? And even as fans of the Celtics, which they are, is there anything more important to them than banner 18, you know, winning again, jumping back in front of the Lakers. If you believe that, you know, LA and Minneapolis, you know, count the same, like it's all they talk about. They obsess over it. It's the reason that, you know, Wick alluded to Brad Stevens having a blank check to go out and turn this team into a champion again. There's nothing they care about more. The league is not involved in this at all. This is not a league concern. It's not a league matter. It has nothing to do with the league. The Celtics have chosen to suspend their coach, again, based on the reporting, not official, to suspend their coach for a year, maybe even get rid of him entirely. A good, solid, qualified, experienced, successful head coach. While you have a a championship contender in place, they are choosing to move on from this guy, at least in this one-year window. They are doing that. They are putting that above winning a championship. For obviously, it's why I keep saying there's more to this, or I believe there's more to this, because they are doing this, you know, cognitively, putting this ahead of of potentially winning a championship. Because I don't believe that they could possibly think that a new first-year head coach, a much less experienced one, Joe Mazzula, is going to come in and 
take them to those heights. Is it possible? Sure. And like, love to be wrong. Super but, unlikely, guys. But but certainly less less likely than Ime Odoka doing it. Mm-hmm. So the fact Agreed. that the team, that ownership is deciding to do this should tell you everything about, at least internally, how severe they view whatever exactly this issue is. Yeah, I agree with that. And it, again, it, we're all assuming, which is bad. We're all uh, trying to figure this out collectively, which leads to bad things. Um, it has to be important enough again as adam just very eloquently put that uh that they would walk away from a first year head coach brought the team in the nba finals like, it's got to be pretty legitimate and that, again we we speculate there's more to come which again leads to us saying that um paul pierce chimed in i don't know if you saw that adam with it should be a fine not a not a leave of absence uh paul pierce should maybe take a back seat on that one just for a second i mean i love yeah. paul to death but like i don't know man you might want to you might want to take a back seat for just a minute yeah, um, but again, in, in you know, the the what people do in their personal life, um, right? Sometimes should stay private, but when, it, when it's co- when it happens like intercompany like this, there's going to be consequences here. Like people are like, "Who oh, should it be a big deal?" I think you're missing the boat. That's all I'm going to tell you. I think you're missing the boat. Uh, on this one, it's it's really important to have um, rules established and you know firm rules, you know top to bottom. Um, and when people screw up, they need to be held accountable for that. Um, but again, we're gonna we're gonna see what it all looks like when uh, whenever we find out. Get no word from the Celtics as we continue to mm-hmm. refresh Twitter and hit F five and all those things. No, we're, as much as we would love yeah. to, because the viewers are still climbing and we appreciate that. We'd love to just sit yeah. here until we have news. But yeah, I mean, I, you know, we don't have stuff to do or anything. <laughs> that, that could that could be like, yeah. You know, in, in all seriousness, like I, I, I bet a lot of people out there are are like this as well. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, so Celtics obsessed and news obsessed. Like to your point, this this first started around, <laughs> pardon me, around ten thirty last night with the Woj tweet, and mm-hmm. I was in the middle of working anyway. I'm on my computer, and then you know all the speculation, all the tweeting, all the everything, and then we get the you know the. Shams report, I think just before 1 a.m. Eastern time, and then the Woj follow-up, possible year suspension just before two. I think I slept for like two hours, confident that nothing was going to happen in the, you know, in the in the like 4 a.m. to 6 a.m. window. But I've just been on my computer since, afraid to even go freaking shower, Ev, because yeah. like that's gonna be the six-minute window that the news is gonna come out, and I won't be right there to react to it instantly. So I'm just sitting here in my own filth observing Ime Odoka's filth, wondering what the Celtics are going to be doing going forward. I can't wait for this show to get done and for the news to break, man. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> but I but mean, at least, at least we have can watched say, you know, in, in, in the, what was it, Bill O'Reilly, F it, we did it live. At yeah, least, you know, yeah. at least it happened, right? For those of you who uh, follow this show, uh, not live, uh, don't understand exactly what I'm talking about. It's the uh, 10 minutes after we get done here, it's going to come down and, that's honestly, that's kind of why we're hanging out right now because we don't yeah. want to miss it. <laughs> so listen, we are going to get going in a couple minutes, but but just to talk about something of actual substance, we really have sure. not talked about Rob Williams at all. And, uh, you know, that was the big story going into this, you know, show before everything Ime Odoka happened. So what's your level of concern about, you know, Rob now in late September having another arth- arthroscopic knee procedure that's going to keep him out you know, for anywhere from like probably two to four weeks to begin the regular season. Uh, uh, so I'm, my panic level here was not a lot because I've kind of expected this to have a little bit of a hang up. Um, that's just my, from when we started this whole journey back in uh, March, uh, April, or when Rob got hurt, then he came back. I just assumed that there would be something um, that would come up to probably derail his, you know, start time. Um, I was kind of shocked that we hadn't heard anything um, because of the nature of the injury and those things tend to linger. I mean, I, I, it, for those of you that are real diehards, I'll go back to the Dr. P interview we had about hmm. Kyrie Irving's knee tendonitis and uh, thinking about that came back right into my head as soon as Rob got hurt. I'm like, yeah, sometimes knee things tend to linger a little bit and knee tendonitis or anything when you, when you operate on a knee, it could linger for the rest of your life. I just assumed that Rob would probably have to have things cleaned up and it probably will happen several times throughout his career. That's not the only time that he does this. Um, as I will continue to say, like, I don't really care. Well, I, at the time, I didn't care. But now I kind of care a little differently. 
Um, at the time before this whole happened, I didn't really care because it was it's more about having guys available in March, April, May, June, you know. Um, yeah. but it, it's just you know part of the process of him getting of him healing. Um, I thought when they you know why why get this the the surgery now? I understood the fact that they would probably want him to stay off it to see if he could heal without surgery. Um, I know guys, you, you tend to try and do it that way. You try to, to let it naturally heal. It's better for your body versus operating again. But if it's really bothering him, um, you know, you're going to have to. And from what we can gather, um, it seems like he was doing pretty well in his rehab. Didn't have any setbacks, didn't have any swelling or anything until very recently. Um, so that's a, somewhat of a scary thing. But again, I expect this to happen anyway. So I wasn't totally shocked by it and I'm not overly concerned about it. Um, but it's something that they're going to have to monitor throughout however long they have Rob. They're going to have to monitor that knee and figure out what the best case of action is. Um, this is He's just injury prone. This is the way it is. He is a breathtaking athlete, but is going to have some question marks. Um, I, I, I was a concern, Adam. You were you were kind of going bananas in every so group. I'm, but, but I'm not – But and, and where it got misinterpreted, I think, on our text chain, is that I'm not – going bananas over it in the short term it's just sort of an extra layer of again something we've said before this is why rob williams got the contract that he got which was viewed as such a steal and is a steal he's an elite player when he's on the floor it's just you cannot count on him being on the floor this is going to be an issue going forward to your point. This is not like they're going to have this cleanup now and then he's going to go play in, you know, 65 games this year plus the entire playoffs and not miss a beat. I just don't believe that. And I think you would be delusional if you are out there listening and believe that. Rob Williams is going to continue. Like this is going to linger or reemerge or whatever it is. Like Rob Williams is going to have, I don't know if it's like you said injury prone. I don't know if injury prone's the the right way to put it. Maybe chronic is the is the right way to put it. Like he's going to continue to have knee injuries or or back issues or feet or what like all the different things that like big men typically have. This is going to happen with him. It's just it is going to happen and that's why, you know, he's quote unquote underpaid or why like Grant Williams may get a a fatter contract than Rob Williams did is is this. This is the reason. So I'm not alarmed by Rob missing first couple of weeks or month of the regular season. If that's what it comes down to, like they'll, you know, skate their lane. They'll figure that out. Like they're a good team. If, if everybody else is generally available, I know Gallinari's not, and people have mentioned him in the chat, but come playoff time. If, if you get ideally a, a, a better Rob in terms of health than you got last year in the playoffs and, and, and credit to him for gutting through what he did and coming back as fast as he did. So taking nothing away from him, but if you can actually get a healthy playoff run out of him versus him having to come back from something, yeah, like that's what you're signing up for, man. Like, please, like there will be no panic at all. But the panic comes from you just don't know. You can never go into a season expecting we're going to have Rob Williams the same way that I think you say we're going to have Jason Tatum, who's durable as hell, or at least has proven yeah, to be so missed far. like five games last year because he had COVID right. or whatever. Like, guys, right. guys are Iron Man. But now I'm knocking on all the wood humanly possible because now it's just it just seems like there's bad juju and bad karma here. But um, sure. you know, Rob, the th the thing is, you know, knees are sort of important to athleticism, and uh, athleticism is a really important part of Rob's game. So, um, you know, it's going to be something they manage for a while. This was something that we talked about ad nauseum on a lot of shows. Their center depth is going to be really important in how they manage not just Rob's minutes mm -hmm. but Al's minutes too. Um, then that's something that, you know, Joe Mazzul is going to figure out, which is gets me back to, I don't think I just, I just really don't think having Joe Mazzul as the coach right. is a great idea. Um, but you know, not great start guys, not a great start, everybody. And, uh, I don't know. Um, we sit here and we wait and we wait and we wait and, uh, we're just waiting for answers, but, uh, you know, uh, shout out Kelly Olenek, who's getting traded from Detroit to, to Danny Ainge in Utah. Boston? Oh. No, he's going. Unfortunately, of course, of course, he's reunited with Danny Ainge. Of course, you know, I had to tell, just throw it out there for Makes some all the sense of the world. I guess I know. Shout out Kelly Olynyk. We love Kelly. Big fans. All right. Well, I guess we do need to go, but yeah. um, 
you know, it's, it's been fun. We ought to do more of these live shows because it is, you know, I, I know we didn't interact with everybody, but just, you know, reading these comments coming through in the chat is bringing me back to live talk show days. And I, yeah. I miss it. I enjoy That's it. awesome. Thank you. So uh, thanks to Jared Weiss, obviously, for hopping on. We uh, sort of, you know, uh, we apologize on his behalf with respect to obviously the the audio quality. But like that's it's not Jared's fault. Tech's tech, man. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. So we uh, appreciate him hopping on, providing the insight that he could. I'm sure he will have a more thorough report uh, in The Athletic as soon as he is finished, obviously, betting everything. You don't want to come on and start spouting stuff without making sure your source. That's what makes him reputable. So we thank him for coming on. Obviously, we'll uh, we'll have him on again soon. The Celtics news will probably come out in about 15 minutes, uh, but that's uh, that's just how it goes. But I believe, Evan, that we are trending toward, you know, Ime Odoka is not the coach next year and probably never will be again for the Boston Celtics. So that's how we've handled this show, and, and I will be really surprised if it goes uh, a different way. Yeah, anyway. thanks, guys. Appreciate right. you joining us. Thank, thank you. Thanks to uh, Amit as well, and uh, Zanis and, yeah, I'm and uh, Mick and everybody else. We we uh, we appreciate all you guys. Evan, Adam, we'll catch you again next week.